Throughout history, people have made amazing accomplishments that define themselves. Now, it's our turn to tell those accomplishments, to tell his story, her story, their story, and even your story. With Mike Wexler. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your story with me, Mike Wexler. We are back better than ever. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys are listening on Apple Podcasts or wherever you can find your audio platform for podcasts, make sure you guys go do that with your story with me, Mike Wexler. Uh, or if you're watching on YouTube and you actually want to watch the full entire thing, I do appreciate that too. While you're doing that, how about you subscribe? I'm sorry, Malcolm, uh, to this channel. Uh, make sure you guys do that as well. But I have a very special guest when it comes to this return. Okay, this man is a personal friend of mine. We've been friends for about, oh my God, 2018? 2000, around there. Uh, this man is a YouTuber. This man is a professional wrestler as well in training. And of course, how can I forget this man is the muscle of Malcolm. Ladies and gentlemen, let me talk to you about the man, the myth, the legend, muscle man, Malcolm. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good, bro. How's it, how are you? You know what? I'm doing well. We're back. We're better than ever. There was a little bit of a hiatus, but that was because I'm kind of busy doing a lot of other things. But I wanted to make sure that this was priority as well. Of course. Yeah, I've been seeing you do the whole ring announcing stuff. I'm like, wow, okay, you're leveling up out here. Nice. I, I, like I appreciate I appreciate it. So let's start off with something that we did talk about before we went on the air. And that's just, you know, how everything's been thus far with you. Because obviously we've seen you do stuff with a lot of interview stuff when it comes to Seth Upper 2. Uh, I believe also Ricky Morton's son as well. Yeah. So like, can you talk to us about like the content that you're making now compared to when you first started? Uh, yeah, so like mainly what I'm trying to do like this summer, I want to transition more into like doing more like cinematic type of things or interviews. So like I want to mainly focus on getting into the, like the interviewing side of like professional wrestling and also uh, documentaries. So I got something coming out, I don't know this month, but maybe next month about uh, Mr. Grimm. Uh, I got some other stuff in the works as well. So I'm mainly just trying to like diversify my, my content because I, I before before and I was doing so much like wrestling content that you just see on other channels. I'm like, all right, I want to. I want to be a little different. I mean, yeah, my personality might be different, but like also I want the content to be different as well. And uh, just talking about like the history of wrestling and stuff like that has always been something that like I'm able to speak on really well. So like it's better than it's better to me than doing like like Reddit videos and stuff. And no, no hate to anyone that does it. But like for me, it's like, ah, like I like Reddit, but I don't want to do a Reddit video. Like I tried it before and it, it was a flop. So it's not for me. I mean, no, there's some people that love to do Reddit videos. I mean, I, as far as I do understand, you do have a roommate that does Reddit videos as well when it comes to the little card. I believe it's card stacking or something along those lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, uh, David from the Lobster. I don't want to say his actual name. Um, yeah, he does that already. He gets a lot of views too, like a hundred thousand. I'm like, yo, my guy, what, where did this come from? Uh, he's super talented. Yeah, I didn't even like. He told me like like last semester or the semester before about it. Like, you were just doing this and just never never mentioned it to me once. Like, what? Yo, this is crazy. Like, awesome. But no, nah, he's doing crazy stuff over there. Like, I I don't understand how Reddit streaming works, but I might have to jump on it one these days. I know, I remember they used to make a video a long time ago, I think it was College Humor that said the, the the reason why Reddit is like so addictive is just that you just scroll through and all of a sudden you're just keeping going, keeping going. Yeah. It's like TikTok, like, dude, like there's so many times at one o'clock in the morning, I'm just sitting on my phone, just scrolling for like an hour and a half. I'm like, I should be asleep right now. What am I doing? Like, what the heck? TikTok is, TikTok's cool too, honestly. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a lot of platforms that are awesome, but also a little bit addictive. Uh, one thing that Muscle Man Malcolm, when it comes to a little bit of addictiveness, is of course his YouTube content. Uh, you know, of course, for those who don't know, Malcolm started around, I want to say 2015, 2016, around that time when you started your YouTube channel. Uh, I do remember when you did the whole WrestleMania uh, vlogs back in the day, when you were going to WrestleMania 32 and so on and so forth. Of course, until the pandemic began, that's when kind of everything went to halt. But so, um, what I did want to ask you was that, uh, where did the passion kind of come from when it came to making content for YouTube? Uh, it all started with, uh, I don't know if you know him or not, but uh, DGDX Animation. He used to make uh, MIT Wrestling. Uh, he's a good friend with uh, Grimm's Toy Show, I, I think. 
um, watching him mainly, and also watching Grimm's Toy Show. They, those are like the two main guys I'd watch. I'm like, yo, this is kind of dope. Because I first started doing like wrestling figure content before I moved into actual like uh, like uh, vlogging and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like watching that stuff, I'm like, yo, like I need something to do. I just moved to DC. I was like, uh, I don't know how old I was, like 14, 15 at the time. So like, I was like, I need something to do. I don't have a whole lot of friends up here right now. So I'm like, I'm going to try this. And it gave me something to do. It's like an outlet to uh, just pass time when you're bored. And like it became something that I just like doing every day now. And now it's like, I wanted to make it to a career path one of these days. We'll, we'll get there. But almost. We're working on it. I mean, I, I do remember a question was asked a long time ago where who's better? Logan Paul, of course. Muscle Man Malcolm, and of course, I think the majority picked Muscle Man Malcolm. So you are up there in that state. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, sir. I'll fight him too. I'll get in the ring. Oh. <laughs> uh, one thing I did want to mention as well is that you really collaborate with a lot of people when it comes to the professional wrestling community. Uh, two in particular is, of course, Leo Rush and, of course, Dash and Chris Bay. Uh, can you talk to us about like what was those collaborations like? Because obviously, there were huge collaborations for your channel. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, Leo, I, I watched Leo's, like, debut, like, independent wrestling match, like, his first ever match. I think it was in uh, in Frederick, Maryland. I went up to it, and uh, I watched him and uh, his tag team partner at the time. Like, it, it was really good. Like, I mean, just watching him going to all the MCW shows, uh, just seeing a guy that's, like, actually climbing the ranks in wrestling that's, like, literally from your area was always, like, super motivational. So to see that, it was like, I'm going to work with this dude one day. Like, yeah, good personality. He's doing big things, obviously, with everything he's done in wrestling. He's done amazing stuff. Uh, just work with him and just uh, him putting me over so much on his Instagram lives uh, back in the day. That that was always really cool. And uh, Chris Bay, um, I, don't even, I don't even remember how I found Chris Bay. I, I don't know if he comment on something that I did and I noticed that he's a wrestler and I was like oh whoa this guy's actually really cool and then I learned he's like from he was born in the same city that I was born in as well which is crazy wow yeah because like he lives out in Vegas or like he's based out in Vegas but he's from like this like DMV like DC Maryland Virginia area so uh to learn now it's like you're both born in the same city of Alexandria Virginia which was uh that's crazy to say the least and to see everything he's doing also is great I talked to him from time to time uh, he's a great guy. I got nothing but good things to say about the both of them. So they both helped me so much. Got nothing but love for him. Oh, yeah. Especially the love coming when Muscle Man Malcolm himself did a song parody or a lip sync parody to one Dash and Chris Bay's. Oh, yeah. my God. What was the song? Uh, it was, I think it was Lonely. Yeah, it was Lonely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that had to be some good moments as well, actually lip syncing to the song as well, right? <laughs> Dude, I was just like in my room. Like, I played the song on repeat like 12 times. Just to like, cause I got the lyrics wrong so many times. I'm like, oh boy, let's shoot this with a different angle. I messed that <laughs> one up. So like, it looked weird. Cause like someone walked into my room, like my friend walked in cause they didn't know I was recording at the time. And they just see me like with like Hawaiian shirt on just like, like uh, lip singing this song. And they're like, what are you doing, dude? I'm like, <laughs> Yo, like this might look kind of weird, but like tr- it's going to come out looking kind of cool. Just give me a moment. I'm just sitting here just bopping to myself. Just like looking completely odd, but it, it was fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, it had to be fun when it comes to lip sync. And I mean, I know whenever it comes to Johnny Gargano's Rebel Heart, I had to lip sync the hell out of that song. It's a good song, too. I wish they ha- I wish he still had it. Yeah, I mean, but I do understand because it's the, the way and he's playing the character. I understand that. Hopefully when, you know, they have takeovers again and they do all that. I'm hoping. Crossing fingers. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully. There's so many good theme songs too that you just don't hear anymore, like like Johnny's and uh, Jeff Hardy and Drew McIntyre. Like, there's so many good ones, man. Well, I mean, No More Words is coming back when live fans yeah. come back. So, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm excited. I'm going to, like, they just announced they're coming to DC on uh, September 11th. So, I'm like, I'm going to park out if Hardy's there, dude. Like, oh my God. You're just going to be singing on to No More yes, Words. <laughs> Doing all of this, bro. Just, yes, sir. It's going to be good. <laughs> And speaking about Muscle Man Malcolm, of course we've known each other for years. Uh, but for those who don't know, uh, the, actually the way that we met was actually through when this man had the YWO Heavyweight Championship of the World. Uh, and he had this, well actually I believe our first encounter was a call out video I made a while back. Uh, am I s- still proud of that one? Not really. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It was it was fun time. So can you talk to us about kind of like, because I know originally it was the WWE Shop Championship and then you had transitioned it to the YWO. Of course, as homage to Miss WWE Fan and the YWO over there. So can you talk to us about like that creative process of creating this new uh, opening for the YouTube wrestling community? Yeah, I mean, um, it was just something that I just thought was going to be kind of cool for me. Uh, I, I was just doing it to put myself over. 
<laughs> gonna be honest. Um, I, once I once I beat Hodge for the title, uh, that was that was a time. I remember Grim uh, super kicking me after. He was like, "Here, did you feel this?" And it kicks me. I'm like, "I did not feel that. That was wow, wrestling. That's crazy." Um, but uh, the transitioning it, I mean, like just because it was a WWE Shop title, I'm like, "All right, like in case I actually really want to do something with this belt, like WWE Shop Champion sounds a little lame." So I'm like, "All right." I was talking to uh, Kayla at the time, and uh, we had the whole YWO thing going on. So I'm like, I'll just name it that. And then I named it that. And then I just haven't really done anything with it in a while. <laughs> but uh, that's also because of the pandemic and stuff. So, I mean, um, we might defend it one of these days. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Ooh, okay. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Uh, one other thing I did want to mention too is that you talk about the YWO and the importance of family uh, and the one thing that is uh, really cool is how much you have connected with your community uh, when it comes to Kayla, when it comes to uh, Vince Martinez aka Benny Wasco who's doing great things in the independent scene for SoCal uh, you know, and then of course you also talk about Tanner who is also known as Undisputed Brotherhood and of course I mean about me and of course uh why a fan and the list goes on and on uh how much is the community mean to you because of course it has a, a huge impact when it comes to your youtube career. yeah man um like the community it, it, it shifts and changes so much because there's so many people that like still do youtube and also don't so like you have these connections that you kind of lose them at times because people get busy because life gets in the way mm-hmm. like there's so many guys that like like five years ago, I talked to you like on an everyday basis. Now I don't really hear from too often just because like I'm doing this or doing that. Life just didn't pan out in that direction at the moment. But like uh, collaboration, especially when it comes to building a YouTube channel, I think is crucial. That's why I'm always uh, trying to do something with somebody. Like that's why I showed up on Wrestle Talk so many times. I just want to work with someone that it helps me. It might help them. Uh, um, but uh, it's, it's, it's 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 interesting because like. I mean, wrestling is, is so, it's already such a niche community that you, that, that it's like, do you really want to be by yourself in this whole thing or do you, do you want to make some friends in it? Cause like, I know I was super hesitant at first when I first started on YouTube to uh, like make friends with like people online. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's weird. They're all strangers. <laughs> but over time you realize I'm like, yo, these people are actually like cool. Like I talked to Wyatt, like I talked to him maybe like 10 minutes before I jumped on this thing. So, uh, dude, I, I talk, I talk to most of these guys on like a pretty much everyday basis now. And uh, just all the people that I keep meeting through this whole social media stuff is crazy. Like, I, I don't know. Like, if I if I told you the last like two or three wrestlers that I've DM on like a normal basis in the last couple of days, like, it would be like, what? How? What? I went from watching these guys on television. Now they got them me or I'm in their Instagram DMs and they're responding like we friends or something. Like, what the heck? That's crazy, yeah. bro. So like, no, yeah. nah, it's important. It's super important. And uh, if you're trying to get into wrestling. Uh, social media, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. Um, be willing to make friends. It's, that's just how life's gonna work. Honestly, if you don't make friends, you're gonna you're gonna fail. So. Well, yeah. I mean, I, you know what's actually funny that you mentioned that is because uh, we had a live event. It was like a private show. It was like kind of not like not exclusive to the public, but it was kind of to that one venue. And I remember that I had asked the questions to the wrestlers that I uh, work with. I was like, you know, w- would it be uh, possible for a professional wrestler to have a degree in, in, in like communications or a degree yeah. in kind of like you know something aside from just being a professional wrestler and the majority of them like oh yeah that, that could be cool you know what I mean but then uh, the person that's training under me or excuse me the person that's training me is saying like you know absolutely because you know you look at all these people like Rilla Monsoon that did it you look yeah. at all the people that have passed that have that experience but it was also a professional wrestler as well I, I think it's really important to not just as a you know professional wrestler but just a person in general to have kind of like that multiple uh kind of talents if that yeah makes sense. totally totally it's definitely important because like i mean especially in wrestling like if you want to be a wrestler like i, I want to be a wrestler and so many other people do as well like what happens if you don't make it like i mean that unfortunately while no one thinks that's going to happen to them it does happen unfortunately so like you always got to have a backup plan so be able to diversify yourself a little bit so like if wrestling doesn't work out i can do this if that doesn't work out i can do that but you know just uh make sure you can do other things as well it's important of course if you could do multiple things i mean i think that kind of ups the ante for you i think it does yeah because i it, it just brings more to the table like there's so many different things that people do i mean look at all the top wrestlers like they all have a talent outside of just wrestling that makes them like important like the reason cena became cena is because he could rap i mean no i mean like you need something like roman was such a good football player and obviously his family and stuff like now he can just walk in and do this and, and the rock i mean he's just the rock so 
Of course, that's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. But not only that, but I would like to take an example too from AEW. Like, look at Platinum Max Castro, who's a part of the acclaim. He's not only just a professional wrestler, but also an editor. He's also a videographer, and also he's a little bit of a rapper. If you don't know that, so he does a little bit. So one thing I did want to mention as well is that I did mention about family. I do want to talk about when it comes to your family. And I yeah. talked about uh, the fam that you have over at uh, the D.C. area representing the DMV. Uh, can you talk to us about like how important it is? Because I know you had talked about your sister, Roan, uh, a couple of moments uh, in your videos. And of course, just your overall just group and family. So how important is family to you? Dude, it's like the most important thing. Like I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for like my my family and friends and friends are are equivalent to family to me uh like i don't know I, i've always been raised by like a, a group of women like all the time right uh dad yeah, wasn't around yeah. and stuff yeah but you know it's like it's, uh, it happens to a lot of people actually so like uh dad wasn't around raised by my mom my aunt my grandmother and uh it's just like the respect that's just like there because it's like like you realize how much they do for you it's like whoa like if it wasn't for what they did i literally would not be sitting here and then like as life uh, gets in the way my mom ended up passing and I was going through a lot of stuff in my head it's just like these people were just always there for me and like I don't know if I would be sitting here if it wasn't for them so like if it wasn't for like my grandmother my aunt who I live with right now uh if it wasn't for like my friends and I'll, I'll show my screensaver because they're very important to me that's uh <laughs> let's see let's let's try to lower that brightness a little bit Oop, there we go <laughs> There's uh there's Ron or Rebecca, that's her actual name. It's my sister, best friend as well. And then that's oh, there we go. And then that's my girlfriend Alexis. Like without them, they are so important to me. Um, I won't cry, but like they're I I could literally talk about them for like the next hour and a half. Like these people are just like the most like inspirational, motivational, like everything under the sun. They mean the absolute world to me. And the reason why I will make sure that I'm successful in wrestling, in YouTube, in all of this is because if I end up winning a world title like that NWA World Championship, uh, when I hold it, yes, sir, <laughs> when I hold it up, I want to make sure I can say, like, I did this because of these people. Like, I did it because of my grandmother, because of my aunt, because of Rebecca, because of Lex, because of all these other people that helped me because, like, I wouldn't be me without them. And they're very important. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, same thing on my side too, because I've been raised by a majority of women aside from my grandfather and my uncle. Uh, and they, they're they just huge inspirations and motivations for me. So that's why when I continue on to that path and pursue my passion, that's what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for my family. I'm also doing it for myself, of course. Of course. They're the main reasons because they're the number one support system. Yeah, of course. The so support system is so important, man. Like, I know there's so many people that like, maybe like their parents or like family, their immediate family aren't that supportive with them. And if that's the case for you, I mean, look towards friends, look towards coaches, teachers, etc. Because like, there are people that are definitely like in your corner, are definitely rooting for you. So like, like focus on those people. But screw the rest. Focus on them because like, when you make it, it's gonna be because of them. It's gonna be because of your hard work as well. So just keep those people in mind, and everyone else push them to the left because they important. And speaking about that hard work, I do see Muscle Man Malcolm putting in that hard work when it comes to the YouTube content, when it comes to education, and of course, when it comes to just everyday life. So one thing I do want to mention as well is that aside from being a YouTuber, you're also one of the top tier students when it comes to university, of course. And Okay, I don't know if that's the exact <laughs> wording, but what's kind of that motivation for you when it comes to like staying in focus, staying in kind of that top tier mode? Because for me personally, like especially last year with kind of online schooling, Oof. it was a lot. <laughs> it sucked, dude. It sucked. I had one semester of like complete online. Everything else was like uh, half in class, half in person. And man, online sucks i don't know how people like actually sign up for online schools like before the pandemic like why would you do that like yo like i, I hope you have a good reason because like i could not do this like it is so stressful to sit in my own house and try to pay attention to that i'm like i could watch tv right now i could do this right now i don't want to pay attention i need to be in a learning environment bro like i cannot do this from home at all <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was the question? I completely forgot. No, 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 no. You're good. Uh, so the question is, like, what kind of keeps you motivated and makes you stay focused throughout that? Uh, well, uh, these two, definitely, for one, uh, without doubt. Uh, they're very smart. Like, I mean, those two, they got a combined average, probably like a 3.7. They're, they're super duper smart. Ooh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Um, it's me as well. But 
what keeps me motivated in school is just like, well, I paid money to go here. I don't want to fail. <laughs> That's usually the, the number one motivation. But as well as like, like having that degree, I mean, it's just it's just important. I mean, like as a person of color, I mean, you probably get it as well. It's like you got to work two times as hard to be seen as you know equal. So like to have that the notoriety behind you, like, oh yeah, I did this in school, I did this in school, and that in school. It's like, all right, well, he's more than just. Uh, a YouTuber more than just uh, the guy that lifts weights and stuff. Like I, I can be more than just that. Like people put you in this category when they see color of your skin and stuff. So it's like I need to make sure that I do this. That way people know I'm not just this one little thing that you would assume. So just uh, making sure that your life is always going to be seen equally is usually my motivation. Well, that's awesome motivation, especially when you're trying to be a trailblazer and you're, you are being the trailblazer within the community and also just YouTube in general. Uh, one thing I do want to mention when it comes to being a trailblazer is that people tell each other to subscribe to their channel. <laughs> you tell people to subscribe. Yes. So like, can you talk to us about like, what was the origin behind that? Oh, it's like the most boring origin ever. Um, so I left the gym one day. And rather than drinking Monster or pre-workout before the workout, like you're supposed to, because it's called pre-workout, I drank it after. Um, so I was hyped up on way too much, because you're supposed to have like maybe one or two scoops of it. That's supposed to give you the energy. I had like five to six. I had a lot of caffeine in my body, and I was like 15 at the time. So uh, I'm sitting in front of Chipotle, and my friends walk in to go get something, and I'm, I'm hyped up vlogging. I probably delete the video. It was too cringe, but uh, <laughs> I ended up saying some speed at the end, and I was like, "Huh, that sounded so stupid. It might just work," and I kept it. And now it's kind of a thing. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we obviously see the graphic whenever it comes to the intro of the videos with the little ch -ch, kind of like a little homage to CM Punk. Yeah, um, yeah. from the Titantron too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Every time it's just there, it's like, oh, it's yeah, kind of video it's no attention. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and then of course, maybe one day, hopefully, we might see a Malcolm Power, not Power Bomb, Pipe Bomb soon. Hey, I'm for that. I got a lot. There's a lot of things. As much as I love the wrestling community, there is a lot of people that piss me off in it too. I got a lot of things to say about certain people. So, uh, if, if if I feel like I'm at that point, I will gladly, I will gladly drop the the diss track on all of them. So. And speaking about diss tracks, I'm glad that you mentioned that because you actually dropped a diss track to one Xavier Woods. And um, uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you did say on the channel as well that you did meet up with him and you did see the video. It yeah. Was kind of, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was uh, fun. I know. Um, I don't I don't know if he really remembered it. I just think he remembered my face. And it was like the utter disappointment is like, you really put that on the internet? And I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, writing those lyrics and performing it are two different things. It sounded way better writing it than it did when it came out of my mouth. I'm not a musician. I can play the violin, but I can't sing. I can't rap. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not made for music as much as I would like to think I am. I sound great in the car when the music's turned all the way up and I can't hear myself. <laughs> I, I hear myself, I'm like, oh, that, is, that sounds really awful. No, I will never do that again out loud. So, that is the last diss track you might ever see. Because, oh boy. Well, that diss track did end up getting thousands of views. And, uh, you know, I, I think you did pretty well for yourself. <laughs> ah, ah, it, was, it was there. <laughs> and speaking about, you know what? Now that I'm on the thought of it, I think one that I think people would love to see is one for Titus O'Neil. <laughs> as much as I like, kind of want to do that, do that right. Like, Titus is such a good person. It's like, do I really have the heart? Even though he blocks me, and I still don't know why. Like, he's such a good person. Like, did, <laughs> can I really insult a man that won the Warrior Award? Like, he's such a good person. And would I really look like a good person dissing like the most kind human in the company? Probably not. I <laughs> not do that. But as much as I kind of still want to, it's probably a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, hey, ideas come through and through. I think a good idea that you did was happen to become a, you know, training to be a, rest a professional wrestler. So uh, can you talk to us about what that process has been like for you? Yeah, I mean, I recently just took a little bit of time off just because I've been taking summer classes and stuff. Uh, I might go back 
in the fall, so it's just been a little break, a little break skis right now. But before that, um, it hard. It's hard. Um, anyone that thinks that it could be slightly easy, no, just no, just do it all. Like it's just, it's just hard. It's, it's painful. It hurts. It hurts. Like, it, it does not feel good to hit the mat. Like if you enjoy it, that's cool. But does it feel good? Hell no. It, it does. It hurts. You wake up in the morning, you're sore, your neck hurts, and yeah, it, it's painful. But um, I can't really complain about it too much. I mean, like, obviously, is it exhausting? Yeah, but like, I mean, that's what you sign up for. You should expect that. Um, like, the trainers there at uh, MTW, where I go, uh, same place that Leo came from. Uh, I forgot her name. Uh, the female ref that's currently on SmackDown. I, I, I don't know why. I oh, oh um, I believe, oh my goodness. I think her original name was Jessica Carr. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was it. Yeah, uh, she went to MCW. A lot of cool people. We apologize if we got your name wrong if we're watching. Yeah, if I got your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm burpees for that. But <laughs> um, no, like the guys over there, they're really good. Uh, the trainers are all amazing. A lot of MCW talent. A lot of guys that are currently doing stuff for Ring of Honor. Uh, uh, SOS, uh, they, they help train a lot there. Uh, kind of Moses. Uh, the Mecca, Brian Johnson, he's over there as well. Uh, they're, they're all super helpful, all really nice guys. Um, for the time that I've been there, at least, I've never had an issue with anyone. Uh, it's all been cool. Uh, some of the people knew knew who, who I was, kind of. Like, they like, oh, you're the guy that makes the Leo Rush videos. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's better to be known for something than nothing, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I can't complain about it. I mean, it's is it hard? Very much. But if there's something you want to do, I mean, you'll, you'll just do it. If you don't want to, you won't. Simple enough. That's what a passion is. If you want to do it and you're going to, you know, sacrifice everything just to do it. Yeah. Do it. Either 100% or zero. Just pick one and go for it. Yeah, of course. You know, and then speaking about passions, you do have the passion for professional wrestling and, of course, making content on YouTube. Uh, so the question I have next is, you know, uh, with everything that you've done thus far, like, what's the goal now? Because, like, of course, you're heading towards, I believe, if I remember my statistics correctly, you're over 20K or close to 20K subscribers? Just went over 21. That was the last week. Yeah. So what's yeah. the next chapter for uh, Muscle Man Malcolm? Uh, I mean, the big the big dream goal in mine has always been like 100K. But like, as of right now, the only thing I'm focused on right now is just diversifying my content and making sure what I do is consistent. Just because school is gets in the way so much that like, it, it definitely gets hard to make sure you upload like three times a week and stuff like that. When also you have like six classes, you know, all in that same week. Like it gets a little difficult. Um, so my goal is to... While I have subscriber goals and view goals that I want, my main goal is to make sure what I do is uh, consistent and also what I do is also quality. So as long as I can like make sure I put out at least one video a week that is of quality, then I feel like I'm I'm definitely on the right path because I feel like uh, part of like I started to slow down a little bit was mainly just because I was I got a little inconsistent just because of school. So my goal is to make sure I'm just like consistent and its quality is going up and. Just diversifying the content, leaning more towards the documentary side, leaning more towards the interview side, just because it's so much fun. Like just talking to wrestlers and stuff, like it's so dope. Uh, I'm a research guy. I love looking up like wrestling facts and all that kind of stuff. So it, it makes it easy. So just aiming my content more towards like looking up that kind of stuff and doing that kind of content and making sure I'm consistent is literally just the main goal right now. Subscribers, all that stuff is great, but it doesn't really mean much to me. So I'm just making sure I'm consistent. And let's not forget, too, that the content that you're putting out as well is content that you're satisfied with. You're happy yeah. with. Because a lot of the times I've met people that are like, you know what? I'm, I'm not, like, I really love what I did, but like, it's only got two views, man. I'm like, it's yeah. not that great. But like, I'm telling them, like, as long as you're happy with it, people will go back and watch it. And then they will. They have their views. Yeah, because like, even if it doesn't work out in your first year, your second year, whatever, like, if you keep doing what's like makes you happy, I mean, look at you. I mean, like, you weren't getting a whole lot of views when you started, but like, look at you now, bro. Like, you're out here not just being a ring announcer and stuff. So, like, if you had, like, if you yourself had, like, looked at your content, like, oh, it didn't get a whole lot of views this time or this time, you probably wouldn't have the same motivation you have to go do what you're doing right now. So, like, right. as long as you're uploading stuff that you're happy with, and, like, I had to take, like, a good, like, look in the mirror and look at my, my content, I'm like, all right. What videos do I actually like uploading? And what do I have up there that I don't really like? I'm like clicking videos, I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like that. So I'm not gonna make that again. I don't care if that's popular. I don't wanna make that again. I hated it, it was stupid. 
even though that's probably just extra critical, but still, um, <laughs> as long as like you upload stuff that you're happy with, you 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 will be solid. Maybe not the first week, maybe not the second, but you will in four. So just keep doing what makes you happy. It will work out. It should work out. I don't see why it wouldn't work out. It's working out for me. As so, long as you have the consistency and the motivation, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like as long as consistency is so key, dude. Like that, that will literally make or break you. Like, probably, probably. And I think you know what when you talked about future. I mean, I think maybe a certain wrestling promotion that has to do with history and that has to do with the ten pounds of gold happens to be in the future, right? I hope. I want it to be, dude. That's like the biggest goal of like what I want to do wrestling wise. I, I have zero. I had aspirations, obviously, for like WWE and AEW stuff because it's money. But it also <laughs> just like wrestling, you know, like you just love it. But like what I want, what I'm so dead set on is like I want that NWA title. Like I just need it. And like I, I just I, I need it. Like like why is it in my hand right now? Like like Nick. Nick, where's my belt, Nick? <laughs> Where is it, Nick? That that's all I if I win that title. I will retire the next day and be done. It'd be happy. That's really all I want out of wrestling. I will leave at the, at the young age of 35 or something and, and preserve my body for the rest of my life. That's all I really want. Just give me the belt and I'll be out in everyone's lives. I, I don't need I don't need wrestling after that. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, well, we will wait for that day to come and we cannot wait for that day to come. But let's not forget, too, that Malcolm just became the 22-year-old piece of gold recently. So happy birthday or belated birthday, Malcolm. Uh, hopefully by the time that this airs, hopefully <laughs> that's the case. Um, but yeah, so how does it feel to be part of that 22 club now? Old, old and gross. Oh, come on. <laughs> I feel like I'm dying every day. Uh, no, it, I mean, like, honestly, last year I felt turning 21. And like, I don't drink or anything. So it's not like I was out there doing that. But like, <laughs> I don't know, like when 22 hit, dude, like I just, I, I my care level just wasn't there. Like it was like, it's my birthday. I'm like, I'm happy that it's my birthday. I don't care, like, I, I don't feel 22. I wish I just turned 19, honestly. I feel like 19 is just such a solid age to be, but I guess I'm just gonna keep getting older and stuff. So that's gross. So I'm just Mick loving it over here. <sighs> legendary movie but of course a legendary age and of course how could you not forget that stupid song that plays every single 22 year old's birthday i'm dude. feeling 22. dude my, my my girlfriend's uh little sister she's a big taylor swift fan i was like oh my is she she referenced that song man she referenced that song. i swear to god she did it thank the lord but <laughs> i was like oh my please please no one mentioned it and then my girlfriend ended up saying it i'm like yo please please shut up shut up in a polite way please politely shut up no don't don't sing it don't no <laughs> and then speaking about muscle man malcolm of course how can i not forget throughout this entire interview not with about your collaboration with grim's toy show yeah and something huge for you because you grew up watching Grimm. So, what was it like kind of collaborating with Grimm and the entire GTS roster? I mean, they're all so nice. Uh, I saw one of the, I don't know which one I saw. Uh, I was at an indie show recently in Delaware. One of the guys were there and I just talked to him for a little bit. Um, all the GTS wrestlers, I mean, I got nothing but good stuff to say about pretty much everybody. I don't have bad experiences. Uh, Grimm, super humble. I mean, like, he's exactly like how you see on YouTube. I mean, it's really the same personality. Maybe toned down a tiny bit which is the case for a lot of YouTubers, but, yo, I mean, like, I got nothing but just great stuff to say. I mean, everyone's so nice. I remember a little story. Um, I rode to, up to a Walmart with him after we uh, shot the first um, shop series match or whatever, and, like, in his car, was just in the backseat, was just a bunch of, like, wrestling figures. I'm like, yep, this makes sense. This, like, this, you're really living the gimmick. It was like a NWO Hulk Hogan was just sitting back there. I'm like, yep, that Fair enough. That makes sense. There are so many wrestling figures in this car. Yep. Yep. I'm not surprised. I mean, this man did get a win at Grimmamania against one Tommy Salami. So, like, there has to be some potential that Grimmamania next year, potentially. I mean, like, it, it can't happen. I, I never even really thought about it like that, to be honest. Like, I, I might have to give Grim a call after this. <laughs> I have to myself. 
Well, Malcolm, I do appreciate you taking the time, getting the conversation. Good catching up again. Uh, before we go, I do have one final question for you, and that is after everything that you have done in your career, after all the hard work, after all the dedication, are you proud of your story? It's not... It, it, I feel like I'm, I'm currently Malcolm in the middle because I'm just in the middle of it. Like, I, I, I am... I am happy where I am, but I'm not satisfied. I'm proud, but never satisfied. Yes. So, kind of. Kind of. As we progress, I'll probably like it more. But we're in the middle of it. So, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here. I'm just here. Well, Malcolm, I do appreciate once again that you took your time to get a conversation with me, getting to catch up. And for those who don't know, you can follow and subscribe. I almost forgot that for a minute. Subscribe to Muscle Man Malcolm on the Muscle Man Malcolm YouTube channel, which the link will be down in the description below. But if you're hearing this on Apple Podcasts or anything like that, it'll be there somewhere. You can just look them up on YouTube, yeah. Muscle Man Malcolm. It'll be there. Uh, and also, not only that, but also on Instagram at the Muscle Man Mal. And of course, how can we forget about that Twitter game? That Twitter game is strong, which happens to be, I think it's Muscle Man Mal still, or did it turn into Malcolm Muscle? It's, uh, I think it's Malcolm Muscle. Yeah, I think the other account yeah. got uh, suspended over, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Malcolm, and we'll see you guys in the next.